and Cheshire. Um, all of you, I think, now um, have been doing this sort of stuff before. You've been to the last AS revision session we run. This one's no different, possibly slightly more boring, possibly slightly more interesting. We never know until we get started. Uh, my name's Mike Murray, Senior Examiner, AQA, and various other exam boards. I'm going to take you through some potential um, topic areas that might come up in your AS exam in well, four weeks, less than four weeks now, I think. Um, we work our way through. You should have in front of you, as a student at least, um, a printout of a PowerPoint uh, set of slides, and we're going to work our way through that, trying to answer questions, trying to make suggestions, trying to help people as we go along. Um, Redland Green have put a, something in the chat window about um, Graham cutting out. Hopefully, Redland, that's not the same case for my connection. Um, it appears to be working. I've got a little flashing icon up here that says we're OK. Um, if it is a problem, let me know. And it must be at our end rather than your end, if that makes sense. OK, we will have a break. Thanks, Redland. We will have a break. We'll answer any questions during that break. We'll answer any questions as we go along. But please bear in mind that I have a minor problem with typing answers to questions while I'm still um, speaking out loud. Welcome, Matteo. Nice to hear from you again. Well, hear from you, that's the wrong phrase, isn't it? Nice to see your typing again, probably the accurate phrase. OK, let's get the show on the road and get moving. So chosen by um, me are the following topic areas to look at today, um, because these are potential, potential areas that might be on the exam. So look at heart rate training effects, jumping, um, perception and selective attention, stages of learning, which leads into feedback, factors affecting school provision, and then quite a long look at two potential topic areas that might come up in that dreaded question seven about training principles and guidance. OK? OK, let's move on. So potential questions, the sort of stuff that might come up. This is a past paper question from about two years ago. I'll explain how changes in the acidity of the blood can cause the heart rate to increase during a game of football. So we need to know something about heart rate. I think the important thing here to state very quickly as the normal question, and it doesn't mean it's going to be there again, but the normal way of phrasing this sort of question is to ask about an increase in heart rate. Rarely, very, very rarely, 10% of heart rate questions will be about, be about recovery and decrease in heart rate, because recovery really is an A2 um, subject. So usually it's about increasing heart rate. OK, now I bet you can do all this. I bet all of you guys, because I know your teachers, can do this. Um, the basic idea is that when we exercise, like all our control systems, so for changing breathing rate and for changing the distribution of blood, exactly the same system works. And exactly the same system gets you marks for changing heart rate changing breathing rate, and changing the distribution of blood. So when we exercise, and I bet some people already put this down, we tend to get more carbon dioxide in our blood. Levels of blood carbon dioxide increase during exercise. There are other things going on as well, but this concept is across all three areas, heart rate, breathing rate, and distribution of blood, and, if, and does you get your marks in the exam. Those changes in carbon dioxide levels will cause an increase in acidity. Don't know how you phrase that. You, you, you can phrase it as increased acidity, or you can phrase it as lower pH. If you're doing A-level chemistry or A-level biology, and you want to put down there's an increase in hydrogen ion concentration, that's OK. That would be in the mark scheme as well. But some sort of idea that our blood becomes more acidic. And then those changes to the chemistry of the blood are detected by Come on, write it down. You know the answer. They're detected by chemoreceptors. Everyone knows that one. OK. And then nerve impulses are sent to the appropriate part of the brain. And the appropriate part of the brain is the medulla. And for heart rates, it actually goes to a thing called the cardiac center or the cardiac control center. Now, every exam so far that we've had on this topic area, I've had in the mark scheme cardiac control center, and then an oblique or a slash, call it what you will, and then the word medulla, um, because they are equally as important. And so if you know it's the cardiac control center and you know it's the medulla, you're not going to get two marks, you're only going to get one. Or oh, by the way, 
if your teachers call it the medulla oblongata, there's no problem with that. It's exactly the same thing. It's just that more everyday language now becoming used in physiology, and therefore medulla tends to be the um, term that's acceptable to the exam board as well. Now, those first four bullet points, more CO2, acidity, chemoreceptors, medulla, are becoming so common in student answers because their teachers are becoming so good at working out what to put for their answers in the exam that we are starting to rephrase questions. If I just go back to the previous slide, it says here, explain how changes in the acidity of the blood cause the heart rate to increase. So it's already get, taken away that second bullet point from the answer on the next slide. Acidity changes. Yeah, OK, right, OK. Now, the most recent um, version of this sort of control facility in the exam was about breathing rate rather than the heart rate. But we said the breathing rate stuff is very similar to the heart rate stuff. And what the question said was something on the lines of, um, when you exercise, your levels of carbon dioxide increase, which means the acidity increases, and that's all detected by the chemoreceptors. So in actual fact, the most recent exam question took out the three points that are there listed on the screen. So it's the latter part you need to know, possibly, to get marks if this sort of question comes up. So the nerve impulses from the chemoreceptors go to the medulla, and then you've got two nervous systems that regulate the heart rate. You may have called it the parasympathetic system. Some centers call it the vagus system. I prefer vagus because it's an easier word to spell. Now, the vagus nerve, the parasympathetic nerve, is the control that slows your heart rate down. It's the braking system. If any of you lunatics out there are learning to drive, you have two ways of controlling the speed of a car. Brakes and accelerator. One foot to control that, those two pedals. Take your foot off the brake, put it on the accelerator. The heart works exactly the same way. Vagus nerve slows the heart rate. And another system, the sympathetic nerve, that will speed up the heart rate. That's your accelerator. And you need maybe to think about this. Does that, does that work for breathing rate? No, we just speed up breathing rate. And then the same system makes that controlled. Do we speed up the way we open and close blood vessels for distribution of blood? Sympathetic nerves will cause vasoconstriction. Remember that stuff from junior revision? OK, but we're back to the heart again. First four points are common to everything. Parasympathetic nerve slows the heart rate. Sympathetic speeds up the heart rate. And what's the part of the heart that these nerves go to? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think your own answer to that. What part of the heart controls the actual beat of the heart? And hopefully, you're all thinking, and you're all writing down the phrase, the SA node. OK, so best guess for a question is like the one on the previous slide, but this time I think it might say exercise, more carbon dioxide, increased acidity, chemoreceptors, and then what happens? So it comes the, f the bottom four bullet points are your marks, and it'll probably, guessing, probably be a three-mark question. So medulla. Parasympathetic slows, sympathetic speeds up, all via the SA node. That should be able to get you your maximum marks for that question. OK, let's move on. Make sure we keep working. So what about an extension of that question? Because quite often, these questions on a particular topic area, like the heart, will come maybe in two parts, sometimes even three parts. So you might have a question about heart rate. And there may be a follow-up question, such as the one on the screen at the moment. What are the effects of training on resting cardiac output and stroke volume? So we need to look at those two. And also at the bottom there from January 12, a couple of years ago again, what's the term used when the resting heart rate is below 60 beats per minute? And again, many of you know these. So let's look at this idea. So your heart. OK, your heart is a great big lump of muscle about the size of a clenched fist, your clenched fist. And the heart gets bigger. So write down the answer, please. What's the correct term, the biological term, for when your heart gets busy, uh, busy, gets bigger? And if you're not sure, ask the person next to you. If two of you aren't sure, 
ask the teacher in the front of the classroom. Make sure you get this correct answer. Everybody okay? It's a common answer. Everyone knows the term hypertrophy. I'm not really bothered if you pronounce it any differently, as long as you spell it vaguely correct. It's hypertrophy. So your heart gets bigger. Now, muscles get bigger when you exercise them. You do loads and loads of weights, then your arms get bigger, your, your shoulders get bigger. Do loads and loads of running and cycling, your legs get bigger. And when you get bigger muscles, which you do with more exercise, you get more muscle, 